paints are designed and made right here in New Zealand to endure our unique climate and harsh environment. Quality paints that last. Resine. It's all over New Zealand. Kayaku nui, kayaku rahi, tēnā rā koutou katoa. I wish you all a warm welcome to the presentation of the 2020 Canterbury Architecture Awards, proudly brought to you by Te Kahui Whaihanga, New Zealand Institute of Architects. I've hosted the New Zealand Architecture Awards in the past in person and in front of a full audience. Things have changed this year, but as the Whakatauki has it, ka mate kainga tahi, ka ora kainga rua. When one house fails, build another. So although the format of tonight's event is different, its purpose remains the same, to recognise the achievements of architects and their clients, celebrate New Zealand's architecture, and acknowledge the difference good design can make in our communities. Before we start the awards, we have a message from the new president of Te Kahui Whaihanga, New Zealand Institute of Architects, Judy Keith-Brown. Tēnā koutou e te whānau o Te Kahui Whaihanga. Over the next eight evenings, we are celebrating outstanding architecture produced by talented architects and builders and committed clients across the country during the past year. For the first time in the history of Te Kahui Whaihanga, we are doing this virtually. You can all be seen across New Zealand and the rest of the world. The team at Te Kahui Whaihanga has worked hard to support our profession during this strange time. I want you to consider your experiences during the lockdown period and how you think we might work differently. What changes do you think there will be to our houses and offices, towns and cities? How can we best contribute to the economic, environmental and social recovery of New Zealand? First, we need to be regarded as an essential profession. We need to work collaboratively and we need the public to understand what architects can offer to their communities. It's important that you know that I, as your president, and the Institute are here for you. These awards acknowledge the trust and confidence clients place in us. They also signify the difference we can make to the lives of all people and they highlight our ambition to realise healthier, more livable and more resilient buildings. Thank you to everyone who entered the awards and to the judges. It was certainly a different process this year. Congratulations to all our winners. Finally, thank you Rosine, a New Zealand company supporting New Zealand architecture. Rosine has been our partner in these awards for 30 years and it has been a great relationship. In this very unusual year, the Canterbury Architecture Awards jury made its visit virtually via online presentations by the architects of shortlisted projects. The Institute of Architects thanks the presenters and the jury for their tolerance of this novel judging process. The jury was led by convener Hui Aririti from Christchurch and included architects Bernadette Muir and Dan Sullivan from Christchurch, Anne Kelly from Wellington, and architectural designer Tobin Smith from Christchurch. Hui says he selected the members of his jury not only because they were long-standing colleagues, but also because they possessed the skills necessary for rigorous architectural discourse. His instincts were correct, he says. His fellow jurors were excellent and he thanks them all for giving their time so generously. Online judging called for concentrated effort, Huia says, and the process could be exhausting. As veterans of Zoom meetings will attest, but the jury and presenters stuck to their task and the jury's decisions were mutually agreed after much deliberating. Huia notes that a number of the shortlisted entries were architects' own houses and he's pleased to say all of them received an award. Canterbury housing is in good design health, Huia says, and the mix of projects awarded in all categories was of an excellent standard. He congratulates everyone who received an award and wishes those who missed out the best of luck for next year. While we're celebrating the winners tonight, we want to acknowledge all of those projects that were entered into the 2020 Canterbury Architecture Awards this year 
and especially the projects that were shortlisted by the judges. Here are those shortlisted projects. That was a shortlist. Now for the winners of the 2020 Canterbury Architecture Awards, which will be announced by category. The first awards announced are in the category of commercial architecture. The winners are Bathroom Pavilion by Archetype. Seldom is the term experience associated with an ablutions block, at least not in a positive sense. However, visitors to Farmer's Corner are treated to just that. Boldly located in front of an existing utilitarian building, the new bathroom pavilion extends the entry access centrally over a four metre long communal vanity and out to the rural landscape beyond. The Welder by 360 Architecture. The Welder is an exemplary architectural response to a brief that reimagined a cluster of existing industrial buildings, mixed use tenancies and public spaces as a community hub for health and well-being. A conscious effort to retain as many existing materials as possible, along with new wooden elements made from recycled timber, have resulted in a tactile environment with old world charisma. Kathmandu Building by Wilson and Hill Architects. Occupying a prominent city corner at the end of Cashel Mall, this new flagship store plays an important role in its retail context. While the building is only a single level, it has the scale of a two-storey building, cleverly doubling its pier on the opposite corner, the iconic Ballantines. It is a thoughtful, considered urban response. There are two winners in the education category. These awards go to McCombs Performing Arts Centre Kashmir High School by Athfield Architects. With this facility, Kashmir has gained a creative focal point for its high school and the community at large. Students perform against a backdrop of multi-layered spaces and contrasting materials, adding a new element of cool to the school. Bold colours in the foyer contrast with a natural material palette in the more private spaces, and the pure white auditorium highlights the stage without excessive lighting. Te Tipu, the Rabbit Patch Preschool, by Phil Redmond Architecture and Urbanism. The building turns its back to the street to create an enclosed space where children can interact and respond to the play of light, shadow and texture created by the building's architecture. 
Ketipu feels familiar and intimate with a calm, neutral interior and a flexible framework that facilitates creativity, investigation and reflection. There are two awards in the category of heritage. Fendleton House Restoration by Harriet Mellowish O'Neill Architects. The architect has assumed the role of custodian to ensure that the restoration and significant structural upgrade of this historic Hethcote Helmo design has been implemented with restraint and respect to the original house. A new generation of artisans has authored a new chapter in the story of this home, which once again takes pride of place at the edge of the Otakoro Avon River. Christchurch Town Hall by Warren and Marnie Architects. Christchurch Town Hall has been described as the city's living room and as one of New Zealand's best examples of brutalist architecture. After the 2010-2011 earthquakes, demolition of the building was mooted, but a public outcry saw the City Council commit to restoring the complex. The fundamental principle was to do as little as possible, but as much as necessary. Several new elements have increased the value and amenity of the building without lessening its integrity. The housing category winners are Reitman House by Athfield Architects. The brief called for a home that doubles as a private art gallery. The architectural solution deftly balances public and private space, announcing itself via a pared back white gable form cantilevering over a black fence. Internally, Natural light is carefully curated and plays across walls that highlight the owner's extensive art collection. Reitman House is also the recipient of a Rosine Colour Award. Hursley Terrace by AW Architects. Confidently positioned on the crest of an undulating landscape, this dwelling snakes along its underlying topography. Despite the use of prefabricated and modular construction elements, the building feels anything but off the shelf. It is a simple, well-considered architectural response that provides a new model for living more sympathetically within our landscapes. Ship House by Banbury Architects and Upoko Architects in Association. A sense of calm and tranquility infuses this home which is a harmonious blend of Japanese form and Kiwi craftsmanship. Rooms slide secretly behind a central spine of timber and glass, flanked by oversized glass panel doors and timber walls. Internal spaces open to the interior courtyard or retreat into their own privacy. Hohere by New Work Studio, Tim Nees Architects. A truly casual Kiwi weekender built with retirement in mind, this off-the-grid building references the rural vernacular of dock huts, resulting in an architecture that is unpretentious, functional and uplifting. A celebration of sustainable construction and living, this house expresses its integrity not only through its crafted timber construction, but also through its conception as an insertion into a powerful rural setting. Park Terrace by Phil Redmond Architecture and Urbanism. This post-earthquake rebuild acknowledges and playfully interrogates Christchurch's architectural heritage. The black gable form is exquisitely composed via a process of addition and subtraction. Drama and contrast underpin the architectural composition with a steel-lined circulation spine mediating between industrial and domestic aesthetics. Terrace House by Shepherd and Route Architects and C Knot Architects. Viewed from the winding pedestrian approach, the house evokes a sense of familiarity and warmth. Across the threshold, relaxed living spaces lead to a towering spine wall that appears to have grown out of the site. Openings to the courtyard allow a transitional softening into the landscape, and planting has already blurred the line between what has been built and what has been grown. Hawthorne Street House by Shepherd and Route Architects. The folded roof that envelops this house is a simple formal response to complex site constraints. A palette of robust materials creates a cosy and relaxed atmosphere and beautifully detailed joinery articulates but does not dominate interior spaces. The house turns its back to the street but offers character and a bit of fun 
via a backlit polycarbonate facade with colour-changing LED lights. Chippendale House by Stevenson and Turner NZ Sited on a lava flow embankment with views of a Whakaraupo harbour, the house with its Canterbury prickle detailing evokes an earlier era while being eminently fit for contemporary use. Clever planning in which a sequence of arrival, entry and occupation is ordered in a linear progress from public to private accommodates the client's extensive art collection. The house focuses views and separates spaces simply, carefully and deliberately. Chippendale House is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. Riverside House by 360 Architecture. The Riverside House is an example of an uncomplicated idea realised with resolute precision. On paper, the house is a pragmatic series of rectangular pavilions stacked and arranged to create privacy on a busy corner section. In reality, the house is a sculptural composition of vigorous forms seemingly glancing past one another without direct connection. There is one award for housing, alterations and additions. Toto Fare by Bull O'Sullivan Architecture. This reworking of a state house on the slopes above Littleton Harbour is what creating a strong, safe and nurturing family home is all about. The hand of the architect is evident in the details, finishing and furniture of a project that is clearly the result of a robust collaboration with the client. Strong cultural and philosophical ideas and natural finishes and reclaimed native timbers are figuratively and materially woven together to create this whare. Toto Whare is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. The award for housing multi-unit goes to Paragon Apartments by Shepherd and Rout Architects. This carefully controlled multi-unit development exudes sophistication and grandeur and fully satisfies the client's brief for structural and personal security. The apartment planning is a testament to a rigorous design method that transcends the box archetype of the inner city unit. Living spaces in both plan and section show a nuanced marriage of form and function. Two interior architecture projects are winners tonight. Ansco Head Office by Jazzmax, Shepherd and Rout Architects and 360 Architecture in association. In this enviable workplace, a sophisticated interior alludes to the meat industry in a tasteful and unpretentious manner. An agricultural narrative has been translated through rich, earthy tones of exposed concrete, timber and earthen tiles. Industry references are used subtly throughout, none more impressively than a wall made of 300-year-old timber sourced from the butcher's floor in London's famous Smithfield Market. St Patrick's Church by WSP Architecture. In this beautiful, understated space, Lincoln's Catholic community has a new home in which to celebrate its faith move beyond the destruction of the Canterbury earthquakes and demonstrate its commitment to sustainability. The use of timber brings warmth to the interior and provides structural resilience and the pared back elegance showcases salvaged stations of the cross which are sensitively sited and effectively displayed. There is one award for planning and urban design. Tainui Street and Town Square by WSP Architecture. The revitalisation of Greymouth CBD has created a much needed high quality public space suitable for a wide range of events. Extensive engagement informed the realisation of a distinctive urban centre that reflects the values and aspirations of the whole community, including and especially Ngāti Waiwai, the local mana whenua. Public architecture features two winners, Dark Sky Project by Shepherd and Rout Architects. This is a brave insertion into the traditional construct of Tekapo, an assertive descent from vernacular orthodoxy, and the result is a successful convergence of horizontal and vertical elements, rangi and papa in harmony. The project, undertaken with a ngai tahu entity, reveals a clever interweaving of Māori mythology and scientific discovery through its multi-layered spaces. All Souls Anglican Church by Warren and Marnie Architects. 
The simplicity of the monochromatic form gives the architecture its power to command its corner site. Creatively rehoused, stained glass windows recovered from St Mary's and St Matthew's churches are brought together and arranged around the glazed sides of the tapering chapel cone. This intimate space is a wonderful place for contemplation. All Souls Anglican Church is also the recipient of a Rosine Colour Award. Small Project Architecture has one winner. University of Canterbury Electrical Link Building Reclad by Warren and Marnie Architects. What at first glance seems to be a simple makeover of an existing structure is actually a beautifully orchestrated response to a multitude of design challenges. The architects of the Electrical Link Building Reclad have approached the pragmatic design brief as an opportunity to reimagine the building through the development of a crisp, white, perforated mesh screen, pervious to light but impervious to avian interference that envelops the existing structure. Finally, there is one enduring architecture award to announce this evening. These awards are given to projects that are 25 years or older and that remain high quality works of architecture. The award goes to Cox Street RC Webb Flats 1974 by Warren and Marnie Architects. This very precise block of four flats comprising unpainted concrete blocks, 45 degree metal roofs and painted timber joinery reassuringly maintain a striking street presence a half century after they were built. The architecture is clearly domestic, but its brutal expression and austerity is almost commercial, prefacing the architect's later contribution to that genre. Congratulations to all those involved in the projects that received Canterbury Architecture Awards. All winners will be acknowledged on the NZIA website and social media accounts and will be published through media outlets from tomorrow. If you are a winner, you will receive your certificate in the next few days. Please note that all award-winning projects will go forward for consideration in the 2020 New Zealand Architecture Awards, which will be judged and announced at the end of the year. Thank you again to the Canterbury Architecture Awards jury convened by Huya Rereti. Thank you to the sponsor of the awards program, Rosine Paints. And finally, thank you, wherever you are, for joining me in this unusual, but no less important celebration of the year's best architecture in the Canterbury branch of the Kahui Whaihanga New Zealand Institute of Architects. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. A tēnā rātātou katoa. <laughs>